Hi, welcome to Going Deeper with Steve Arterburn. Really glad you're here today. We're continuing a series. It's a 12-step series, and we're on the third step. This is Going Deeper, and I think even though it's focused on divorce, I think uh, it's probably going to be helpful to you no matter what you're going through or what you have been through. I'm using the Life Recovery Workbook on Divorce. By the way, there's another one on sexual integrity, a different one on an eating disorder if you're overeating there, and then uh, a whole other one on sexual integrity and then a general workbook. Uh, you can get all of those at newlife.com. But here we're going to talk about this third step, and uh, we're going to read some scripture uh, because um, it's pretty amazing. You know, um, in the first step, we essentially said, uh, I can't do this on my own. I have an extreme limitation. I'm unable to pull this off by myself. That's step number one. Number two says, I came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. Now, if you've gone through divorce, if you're functioning on any cylinder at all, it's pretty insane. Uh, everything just changes. I mean, the bottom falls out. It is not fun. It is not pretty. And I hate it. <laughs> and I've been through it. But then once we come to believe that there is this power that could restore me to sanity and I work through all of the reasons that I'm that I'm I've been hesitant or I've been so reliant on myself, then I have a decision to make. And that's where step three comes in. We made a decision to turn our wills and our lives over to the care of God your life and your will. So willpower? No, no, no. I want God power. I want it to be God's will in my life. And so I want uh, to turn my will and my life over to the care of God. Now, before I, um, I, I really do this, and, and what this is called, of course, is surrender. And I have seen the reality of my situation. And I have seen the reality of God. And now I am surrendering. So before I surrender, all I can really do is see my reality. But when you, when you start to believe in the reality of God, then you can surrender to God. You know, a lot of times folks uh, say, I'm waiting on God to do something. Well, maybe you've been waiting on God to do what God has been waiting on you to do. How about that? So let's don't do that anymore. Uh, maybe you say, I really believe it's going to get better. But that belief actually isn't belief. It's a wish that you have. And it's a wish based on false hope. So people do that all the time. We call those fatal excuses that keep us in exactly the same situation that we've been in forever. So we have to do something. We have to use the tools that we have, which is a brain, a heart, ears. We have to listen. And we have to stop and we have to reflect. And then finally we say, you know what? Every time I try harder, it just makes trying harder. I am ready for something different. Because in and of my own power, my own strength, I'm dying. Literally dying physically. And I was at a place in my life where, you know, I was sick because I didn't surrender to God. 80 ulcers in me. Lack of surrender. Then when I did surrender, all that shame went away. I accepted Christ's forgiveness. Boy, did my sanity return, but also my physical health return. Spiritually and emotionally, I'm sick when I'm functioning under my own power, doing things my way, essentially, you know, taking things or matters into my own hands. Some people, uh, they don't surrender because they say things like, well, you know, I'll never ever trust anybody that's in the church. I get that. If you were uh, in a church where you were sexually abused, I wouldn't either. But hopefully, 
at some point you're able to see that not every evil person represents a God who not only loves you, but wants to restore you. And you can get beyond it. You can grieve what that person took from you, but no longer be influenced by or controlled by that person. When I surrender, and I do it on a regular basis, you know, I get caught up in worry, anxiety, all this, and then I surrender, and there's relief. Oh, it's just so great to have this relief, and then security is so fantastic. I'm trusting God. I'm not focused on all my shame and regret. I'm not uh, obsessed with dread and anxiety and fear. I'm just with God because God has my back and my front and both sides. So I can surrender to God. And, and it's so great to go from all this shame about the past, all this worry about the future, to peace and serenity and sanity. I mean, really, if right now, you said, God, I've been taking um, uh, matters into my own hands. Or, uh, God, rather than take matters into my own hands, I, I've had idle hands. I haven't done anything. And I've just been waiting for you to do something. Um, rather than that, you know, you decide, I'm going to engage with God. I'm going to say, God, I can't do this. I know you can. I want, I want you to do it. You might even think this way if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior. You might say, and God, uh, I don't know about this Jesus salvation thing, but I'm open to it. I want to know about it. Send some people my way. And then you search out some folks who really understand what it means to turn your life over to Christ. It's really simple. It's just saying that uh, I'll never be good enough to enter into heaven where a holy God has to be around holy things. But Jesus died on the cross, took the penalty of my sin, wiped it completely away. And now I can be in the presence of a holy God because Jesus has paid the price of all, for all that sin. Pretty amazing that we can do that. If I had to be a good enough person to get into heaven, I would have messed up a long time ago. It would be hopeless. You know, one of the things when we surrender uh, that we're giving up, it's just an illusion anyway. We're giving up control. We think we can control another person or we think we can control our circumstances or our job or our life or whatever it is, but we can't. And a lot of times we're so afraid of stuff that that's what leads us to want to control things. But when I surrender, I don't have to be afraid because I know my life is in God's hands. Listen to this wonderful passage, Isaiah 54, 4 through 8 in the Life Recovery Bible. It says this, Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of your widowhood. For your Creator will be your husband and the Lord of Heaven's armies is His name. He's your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back from your grief. Though you were a young wife abandoned by her husband, says your God, for a brief moment I abandoned you, but with great compassion I will take you back. Now God just wants to do that with people. He wants to take them back. He wants to bring us to Him. And He'll remove the shame and all of the regret that we have experienced in our past. You know, there's such a difference when I surrender and start living a surrendered life than when I'm living that life of self-will. I mean, it's, it's just not uh, a good thing ever, this self-will that I have inside. But when I surrender, it's over. You see, when I'm under self-will, it's all about my desires, what I feel like uh, I want. And that's all short term. So my desire, here's what I want, God, and it's short term. And uh, 
when I surrender, I'm saying, okay, God, your will. Not this short-term stuff for me, but the long-term stuff for you. Pretty exciting. When it's me, it's all about how I feel. And when I surrender, it's about God's truth and what it says. And, you know, it doesn't say crummy stuff. It says great things, hopeful things, ways to live, a path to follow. When it's all about me, you know, it's my plans and what I want to do and what I'm going to say and all that. But when I surrender, it's all about the process that God has for me. And I just want to submit to that process. And it's not going to be easy, but it sure isn't as, e as hard as the way it was before. Trying to get through this divorce under my own power. Trying to act like uh, it wasn't that bad. Or that I'm the good guy and the other person's the bad guy. And then, you know, whatever I'm going through, that's, that's what I conclude about God. I may have gotten myself in this mess, and then I decide, well, this must be uh, all God's doing here. And then I realize for the greater good, he gives us the ability to choose. He allows us the freedom to choose really crummy stuff and then come back to him and choose stuff that's not so crummy at all. It's pretty wonderful, I think. If it's all about me, it's my circumstances versus, um, well, I'm just one person in the midst of this eternal plan that's playing out here on the universe. When it's about me, comfort. God, help me feel better. Uh, re re remove the pain. Give me relief. And when it's surrendering to God, I'm saying, God, I am for the greater good willing to go through this. Because you're building my character. And I won't grow in character just doing everything that's comfortable for me. And then, of course, when I surrender my life, I am looking outside of myself for wisdom, strength, power, truth, hope. And what a genius you are when you do that. When you say, this is beyond me. You know, I uh, I love people getting help. I, I love people going to a counselor. The best counselors in the entire world are counselors that when they, they have something that's just way, way too tough, they say to the person, this is beyond me. I can't do this. I can't help you. I don't know what to do. What a great, great thing. They're kind of like saying, there's somebody smarter than me. There's a power in the counseling world greater than me. I'm going to go check on it. Or um, maybe they decide that you need to be referred to somebody that's had more experience. That's a, that's a powerful thing when someone helps you in that way. So what we're talking about here in step three is surrendering my will, uh, surrendering my life, surrendering everything to God. Now, when I do that, I'm going to accept God's forgiveness for the mistakes I made in that marriage that might have contributed to the divorce, but they might not have. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Everybody makes mistakes in marriage, but not everybody divorces them. So you might have made some mistakes that, that caused problems, but they weren't the reason you got the divorce. I hate it when somebody says, yeah, my, my spouse divorced me. And then they say, well, what was your contribution to the divorce? If anybody says that to you and you're the person that somebody divorced, you say none. I had some contribution to difficulty and struggle in the marriage, but I was ready to go the distance. See the difference? So when we surrender, we surrender to truth to reality and a lot of times a lot of shame that we would normally take on we don't have to we can trust god so i am hoping i'm praying that something i have said might help you make a decision to turn your will and your life over to the care of a very very loving god i love getting to talk about this because i know on the other side is strength and hope, purpose, meaning, and a path that you can follow. Until you discover that path, 
just do the next right thing and it'll take you down that path. Thanks for joining me for this third step. See you next time for more Going Deeper with Steve Arterburn.